Hello. Um, so I am Tom McWright. Uh, you may remember me from this morning. Um, and uh, this is Eric Fisher. Hi. Um, and so we're basically talking about this, um, this report that we made called the OpenStreetMap Data Report, um, which went live uh, yesterday. And so you can go to it there. Um, it's basically a website in the style of a report that a company or you know, a large community would make to kind of summarize um, achievements and statistics um, for the purposes of really, really quickly kind of explaining how, how OpenStreetMap is big and what exactly is changing with it. Um, and so the problem is really that you know, it's the classic knowledge problem. Um, I work with OpenStreetMap almost every day. Um, and know way too much about it. And so you don't really understand that like you can actually go to the home page and not really realize that it's a very large thing, that it's very deep, that it's changing, that lots of people are doing it. Um, so it's this question of how do we tell everyone else? Um, this tries to tell the story of OSM. It tries to create like a sort of narrative of it started here, it, it grew in a certain way, and things changed as it went along especially in the US, um, because you know, we're in the US now, and also it's a very unusual place for OpenStreetMap. Um, so to, to be clear, we kind of did have some themes. It wasn't exactly scientific. Um, so before we started, we already knew that we really wanted to think of like, what the OpenStreetMap user base means, um, who is in it, and like, how it's changing over the years, um, as well as what OpenStreetMap's data looks like. Um, this is a really early map, um, and Eric will talk later about some much more incredible maps that we made for this report. Um, and so if this sounds familiar, it's because all of these things are already on the wiki, and they already have been for quite a while. Um, and it's the classic problem that you know, any information visualization person will tell you that data is not information. Um, that you can show people charts and graphs, or you can even have a basic line chart of you know, how many users are on a website, but the take-home lesson is completely lost. Um, and so despite having this, you know, our power to communicate about OpenStreetMap just wasn't where it should be. Especially if you really care about making things beautiful, which we do for whatever reason, and especially if you want it to be a conversation. Um, and I mean a conversation in that you could feel comfortable link dropping the page and being like, oh, you know, maybe something, someone will want to write about OpenStreetMap in, in a newspaper article and suddenly become this kind of amplifier for what we're saying. Uh, so let's just kind of look at what we made. Um, the first thing was road updates. And I'll uh, let you grab the mic here. Thanks. So uh, yeah, the, I ended up making this kind of uh, angry fruit salad map to show, uh, you know, change change in OSM over time. Um, do you have? I guess and let me open up the you go to the tabs. Um, um, or, or, that was weird. Oh, you've got these them open guys there, so are all of them. Um, thanks. So um, oh, and I guess I can put it back full screen. Um, That's, that's better. Um, so yeah, what I was what I was trying to do with this was, um, you know, just I mean, it seems like a fairly straightforward thing, just to say, you know, how how old or new is the data in each piece of OpenStreetMap, but um, kind of just the the magnitude of the OSM database and the way it's structured makes this kind of a kind of a pain to do um, because you know you have all of these nodes with their different timestamps, and then you have all of these ways with their different timestamps and the the ways refer back to the nodes, but but you know making the connections within this gigantic file, um, you know as an end user rather than somebody who has you know has access directly to the to the main OSM database that already has. And this way, you can actually sort of accumulate, you know, what the what the distance mapped over time was, um, which I didn't know any other any other way to do. Um, but the the pictures here actually, um, 
I guess I'm just going to show some of the highlights of particularly interesting, uh, particularly interesting looking places on this. Uh, this one is Massachusetts, um, and it looks completely different on here than the rest of the United States uh, because it was a separate import. Um, almost all the almost all the U.S. data ultimately originated with the Tiger import um, from the U.S. Census Bureau. Um, but Massachusetts was a completely separate thing from the uh, Massachusetts, uh, I think, Mass state, state GIS department or something like that. Um, and as a result, uh, the Massachusetts data is all actually much less edited than the rest of the United States. Um, and so it's, it's all green on here because it's, you know, by the sort of the color spectrum of this is, is I mean, it's kind of backwards in a way that the red stuff is the newest and the, the green stuff is the oldest. But... Um, but yeah, the the sort of you know everything else in the U.S. has sort of been been updated by these various bots that that have done things to fix Tiger data and you know Massachusetts.
let me show you. Uh, so originally, I was just working on this, and I'm not a designer, so I just take design. Uh, I just do really bad designs. Um, and so let's see, uh, 3002. Yeah, you can see that I'm not a designer by how I'm doing this. Um, this was how I wanted to do it, um, <laughs> which is, you know, it's kind of cool. It crashes your browser after a while because it's just like such a long line. Um, and it shows like when that amount of the world was wrapped. But it isn't very informative. And, you know, it's just weird. Um, so luckily, I didn't finish that part of the project. Um, that was taken out of my um, uh, you know, tasks and into people who are much more qualified. And so we did something that's much more digestible. Um, so for instance, uh, the 847 orbits of Earth and 40.13 years of driving at 60 miles per hour. And it's actually a, it's a shame. I shouldn't show a slide of that because it's animated. <laughs> it's awesome. Um, <laughs> And so it's kind of like this, this framing slash like storytelling, which made that number, which in, in and of itself is kind of an incredible thing. You know, like 20 mo million miles of roads is really, really far. Um, and, you know, 93 trips to the moon. Um, it, makes, it makes the number seem very uh, tangible in a way. Um, and of course, you know, kilometers for people who preserve that. Um, and then finally, uh, let me open this in a correct tab. Um, kind of the last step of the report is a collaboration that um, E&D started on and Salmon and I worked on to make it look a little bit um, friendly, um, is this, which is kind of a, a live vision of what's happening in OpenStreetMap. So after showing basically what's statistical, historical data, we suddenly show like OpenStreetMap actually being a thing as the lead up to the start mapping now button. And so, you know, technically this pulls from the overpass API minutely diffs and draws it on a map, et cetera. But what it is is that you're actually seeing people editing the map. Um, and, you know, it's not exactly real time. This was two minutes ago, but it is true. Um, you can click on this and it was actually somebody two minutes ago and it's actually in a place. Um, and so like that's the, that's how we lead into the start mapping button, um, which also, if you want to think about details, this doesn't link to OpenStreetMap. It links to welcome to OpenStreetMap. Um, refer to Salmon's talk an hour ago for why it does this. Um, basically, we were afraid of linking people to OpenStreetMap. Um, I'll talk for just a few minutes about tools if you want to actually do this kind of stuff. Um, my tools are much more boring and weak uh, than Eric's. Um, I use a tool called Sometime Machine, um, where you can uh, make a little database, little SQLite database, which contains like change set information. And so that goes into Python, and then it goes into SQLite, and then it goes into Node. And lots of words, but in the end, it's actually very small. Um, you can go to tmcw slash Sometime Machine to try it out. Um, and Sometime Scripts contains the actual code that we use to generate these visualizations. This is one of them. This is the Bob Mode map. It's very, very small. Also a very, very small font for some reason. Um, and then Inkscape, because, you know, designers. Um, the real graphic is this, of course, uh, which is also the least technical graphic possible. This was just taken from the wiki page, which already had exactly this chart, except a little bit uglier. And we redrew it. Um, but it's kind of incredible, because it's like the, the central question. It's like this, what is growth pr problem? And I think that this is the most arguable part of the data report. Like, if you were to think about, you know, uh, it's almost like if you had a company report and they were only talking about revenue and not profit, um, you would get a little bit skeptical. Um, so we don't want to just show this graph. Um, but at the same time, it is really interesting because there's this disparity between contributors and contributions that we can see in some of these statistics. And ideally, like the, the question of this report is that, you know, we have data growth, we have sign-up growth, but what we really need is conversions between the two. And so at best, like any visualization, it's an honest but limited facet of the truth. Um, it's dominated by experts. New mappers are important. Uh, bots and imports, though we hate them, they're the facts of life. Um, idea is awesome. 
Uh, this is my crappy version of the edit map. That's it. It's, I mean, Yes. Uh, uh, it's a tool called Big. Um, it's uh, GitHub.com slash TMCW slash Big. Um, and MacWrite.org slash Big. Uh, it's with the full history, um, so, you know, not the part that the full history skips. Um, and, of course, the, the version on the internet basically shows fewer squares than actual people um, because your browser would crash, and then it resamples it back to the right numbers. Uh, in that case, it's all users, um, so it's counting users who have done zero. Well, the, well, the tree map obviously only counts people who have edited once, um, but it doesn't count out anyone. Uh, one, of the, one of the big things, the other thing that you could argue about this if you wanted to, um, is bots. Uh, we don't really have a list of bots, and we should, um, because they skew every visualization possible. Um, but problem, you know, one problem at a time and all that. I, I wish I had. I didn't. I didn't think of it, uh, but I'll have to have to give that a try. Uh, oh, sorry. The question was about looking at uh, the the most recent editor of each way, doing something about how long how long those people had been editing, like what the you know the recentness versus total responsibility is. Anyone else? Thank you all.